Okay, so it's just a few minutes before, an hour, hour or two before we're about to leave. And to be honest, it's kind of a miracle that we made it this far because last night that whole patio was covered in tools and, and equipment and just trying to get the electrics sorted out for this vehicle. Uh, what are we doing? Basically, we're taking a 40 day trip from Durban around the coast to Cape Town, which is incredibly exciting and obviously I feel very fortunate that you know we're able to do something like this but you know working on the road and things like that but i mean basically so this video is just quickly, quickly going to cover uh, all of the boxes that we've packed and and also like um some of the changes that i did to the car in order to facilitate having a fridge but yeah so i'm just going to quickly take you through that so let's see uh, so starting off here we've got first box is the rescue box okay so that's basically got um tow rope oh, so the tow rope's not in here i've had a bit of a problem with the tow rope so we're gonna have to replace that but yeah uh, so that's um jump stock kit tire repair kit spade uh vests and things like that so and then over here we've got just two boxes which is just going to be like my stuff and then dylan's stuff so that's just going to be like a few of the electronics and things like that you can see there's kind of just tools going on everywhere but then if i show you this this is basically the chaos that he's all packing right now which is this is the most organized it's been in two weeks but so let me just take you through this so we've got two cooler buses coming there we're gonna we've got the fly fishing rods and we've got the sand spikes for the beach um tackle box bait box and uh neat things like that and then we've got these two cooler boxes so one we're going to pack with ice and one we're going to pack with maybe like fridge stuff or beers and things like that and then we've got the start of it so I'm going to go through front layer and then I'll go through the, the rest so we've got this is pantry um, pantry one which is just going to have some like cereal and drinks and coffee and tins and things like that and then we've got pantry two which is basically more like spices extra cups instant pop uh, just anything really but basically these two boxes are the pantry boxes um, kitchen one which is going to be the kettle, so I've got a little blue kettle that goes along with this little gas guy. Um, and then you also I guess some bowls and oven gloves and just any kind of other things that we might need for that. And then yeah, kitchen two, so kitchen two slash hand sanitizer slash toilet paper slash Nutribullet. Because we use the Nutribullet for I guess make cocktails, make make a Thai green curry so um, yeah I'll probably post a video of that at some point but yeah so <laughs> the Ninja Bullet actually is used quite a lot and other than that that's just kind of just a box to get it take around there we go so we've got the top box here so that's basically just um, some robes some bungees things like that and I mean that's basically just going to go hand in hand with this uh, top that we've got strapped up to the, one of the tall lids there and then yeah so now we've got a toolbox so this wasn't even one of the planned boxes but this came in because this was literally everything that we've been using in the last few minutes just to try and get some of this kit ready and we sort of thought especially with all the electronics that are involved if we don't take this then we're going to have a problem um, and then here I've got here what we're calling the charging box and that's basically just everything is rigged up into here so this this shouldn't really shake around too much like everything in here is wedged in so we've got some power banks walkie talkies um, yeah just a bit of everything that kind of controls my life but um okay so yeah let me i'm gonna show you the car so <clears throat> to be honest the car has been the biggest hassle of this whole thing keys. maybe that's been the biggest hassle of this whole thing is finding my keys at the right time so the reason my car has been the biggest hassle is basically because uh, learning some of the electronics required to get the fridge to work has been a little bit of an experimental thing for me. And I, I didn't really know what I needed to know coming into this. And so I've been trying to do as much research as I can. And then some people are really super helpful and then they'll tell you things. But then the problem is you go to the next 4x4 guy and he's like, no, 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 no. That idea that you've heard is rubbish. You should do it this way. And then you start going down that rabbit hole and then somebody else tells you it's rubbish. So I've kind of put together my own plan. So I'm gonna show you what that is. Uh, okay, let's see, let's jump this round. So here's the vehicle with the rooftop tent. 
looking good, kind of ready to go, I think. So let's come on here. The first thing I want to do is basically just show you how the fridge is being powered. Um, so it was quite a hassle to get to this point. Up the bottom here. Okay. So there's two things that are happening here, right? So the first thing is that there's cables coming off of that battery which are going underneath the cab and all the way into the back and then the other thing is that there's a little power box here which we can use basically to plug into campsite power but so that'll make more sense when we come around close up here <coughs> so you can see this is still a little bit stripped I need to start putting things together but basically so you can see there plugged in mounted up to the side of the uh, cabin is um that's the dual battery isolator and then what is is coming around all the way that's going to get all get tucked behind the you know the car stuff plastic whatever it is that's coming down there so let me show you from that side because this is where it gets really interesting so basically those wires come down to here and then those come to, down to this Harrison plug. So this is basically what you would need to unplug if you actually wanted to unplug the electric, uh, the dual battery essentially. So, okay, so basically, so there's the fridge there. Like, let me just give you a perspective on the back end because I think my brother's probably gonna wanna see. Oh, come on. Here's the fridge and we've basically just built this whole wooden mounting system which sits where the chairs used to sit so that's kind of taken care of that and then let me <coughs> this is going to be a roof that basically this is just going to be on a hinge so that's just going to be able to lift up when i move the seat forward so if i just do that just so that's out of the way all right okay so what we, what we got here is we got basically a top compartment with a basically a false bottom compartment and inside the false bottom compartment it's got all the work going on that's that's kind of powering this whole thing <laughs> looks like quite a mess right now but it is working um i'm probably going to be working on that on the road that's why i'm taking all the tools so if i look here basically so we've got the first thing is that we've got a switching bed okay so i want to explain quickly before i jump into all this i want to explain the one plug so there's a plug inside of the engine bay there that's coming all the way around here and that plug is plugging directly into this plug so this plug is basically, when you get to a campsite, this is representing 240 volts. The plug in front of it is um, the inverter. So I've got, I've got here a little 375 watt um, 12 volt inverter. And that's, I mean, all of this is basically just being plugged off a 100 amp hour 12 volt battery. And then, yeah, so let's just go in. So basically, um, yeah, how it's working is that I've got this option for, this is AC power when I'm at a campsite. And then what we also have is we have the dual battery system so that's charging off of the main battery when the alternator is running and then there's a <coughs> MPPT solar charger there in the back and that's basically running the solar panel so how that works is that's wired up to this Harrison plug here and so that if we want to plug in a solar panel I'll damage this a bit um, if we want to plug in a solar panel then we can just plug that into here and then that'll just give us hopefully some off-grid power but basically, yeah, so from here, this is running the, this is the AC charger. So that's going to charge the battery when you're at a campsite. And then, yeah, hopefully everything is actually um, set to work off here. Let's see, I forgot how to turn this thing off so that it will actually show me the lights. That's not the what I wanted. Should be five seconds on the set button. All right, so yeah, so you can see that the batteries are sitting on basically 100% right now. Uh, and then what I have here is I have the fridge plugged into the cigarette lighter port which is plugged directly into the MPPT which is plugged directly into the battery. The reason why that's going through the MPPT is because it's metered so I can see how much the fridge is taking up essentially. And then the fridge is also plugged into the 
AC so that essentially if I plug it into a campsite it's just going to automatically go off of the 12 volt and just automatically onto the 240 volt so that's what the fridge does and then the other thing is I have here these thanks to Garth these little electric plugs here so these are basically so yeah I can just put this on and then if I click this eye here then that's basically the inverter so you'll see this second multi-plug at the back is the inverter and then that's busy running all of that so basically the idea is that I can sit here and I can switch so I mean that's no more, no point of switching that to the inverter because that's um, that's the fridge and it's already plugged in but <clears throat> essentially what I can do is I can take the I can take anything like the, the power box for example the charging box and I can switch it over to the inverter if I want to and yeah I mean that's basically it so that's now the result of that being that um, the fridge is now I hopefully working. Which it's only fun if you check. Oh, it's not on. Horrible. <laughs> Obviously, at this stage, it's going to be the stage that it doesn't work. So let's see why that might be happening. Yeah. So to be honest, debugging this whole process has been big part of the whole process so okay yeah so I see already what's wrong is that this fridge needs to be on so basically now if everything has worked out the way it's supposed to which it has not okay well I'm gonna keep this video on probably take all this out because madness okay let's see let's turn the inverter off because it doesn't need to be there Okay, uh, so the fridge is powered, this seems to be plugged in. And the fridge is on, the mains is on. So this is what I've been doing for the last few days, is climbing in and out of this cab. Okay, well this one time, the time that I make real difficult for myself is the time that it works. And so yeah, basically probably two weeks of planning and I don't know how long else just to get to the point of having that little number there on that screen and hopefully if everything is going to work out to plan then the idea is that we should be able to do that for at least 12 hours of power just from the battery and using the solar panel. So we've got actually, I haven't showed you the solar panel but basically it's just mounted up onto Dylan's car. He's managed to mount it up onto the roof rack. So it's just got underneath the roof rack like that. He's got a mounting point and yeah so basically with the with the power the alternator and, and everything else we should be able to get 12 volts 12 hours in the fridge and then using solar maybe get a little bit a little bit more whatever the case but yeah it's been quite a, quite a journey to get up to this point so i'm pretty glad it's done and i think we're ready for this 40 day trip and yeah yeah so i mean that's basically it i wanted to say a lot of thanks to jason from gw store because he to be honest made half this possible so mike and my dad actually helped me with a lot of things but yeah jason was a real lifesaver changing my my plan of how to do it so yeah now i'll just pack all that into the car Hi, Dylan. What's up? and then we're done and ready to go peace i'm dying to eat man <laughs> i'm doing the video okay.